Good morning, Global Gardeners. So today we are going to talk about something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You guys need to figure it out. So today we're going to talk about something that is huge, something that's really hot, something that's really bright, and something that gives life to the whole world. Any ideas? This thing lives in the sky and it's white. It is a star. It's made of a bunch of gases. Any ideas? I think you guys have probably figured it out, but we're talking about the sun. The sun is a super important part of life on earth. Without the sun, what do you think our world would be like? It would be cold and it would be dark and nothing would be alive. The sun is super important for life. How? Well, the sun gives light to the plants. And the plants take that light, they take that energy from the sun, and they turn it into energy in their plant bodies. And when we or animals eat those plants, we're getting sun energy. And that sun energy is what keeps us alive. So have you guys ever noticed after you eat lunch, you feel super excited and ready to go and you have lots of energy to run around? Yeah, that's because you just stocked up on energy, specifically sun energy. And without the sun, you wouldn't have that energy. It wouldn't be good. So the sun gives us energy to do everything. But the sun does more than that too. The sun keeps us warm and it keeps us um, able to see. Without the sun, it would be so dark and you would just be like trying to find everything just by being blind and it would be crazy. So the sun is really important to allow us to be able to see, to keep us warm, and to give us energy. Another fun fact about the sun is the sun is huge. How big do you guys think the sun is? Well, here's an example. If this is Earth, this P, pretend this P is Earth. Do you guys see how tiny this P is? Pretend it's Earth. The sun is going to be this beach ball. Tiny Earth, huge sun. Tiny Earth, huge sun. The sun is huge compared to Earth. Or imagine it this way. Everyone hold up your pinky and then point to the fingernail on your pinky. Okay, pretend that is Earth. Now, stretch your arms as wide as possible, keeping that pinky out. Wow. All right, remember, this big wide thing that you just stretched out, that is the sun. And your pinky nail is earth. So, huge sun, tiny earth. Huge sun, tiny earth. All right, do you guys see these plants behind me? Behind me, I have three types of plants that grow best in summer. There are two types of watermelons and one cantaloupe. These huge fruits like to grow in summer when it's hot and when there's a lot of sunlight. Right now, what season are we in? We're in fall, almost winter. In fall and winter, it's gonna be a little bit colder, right? And it's gonna be a little bit darker. And the sun isn't out as long, isn't out for as long period of times as it is in the summer. So because of that, I'm trying to trick my plants into thinking that it's summer. And so I've given them two extra lights. And the lights are kind of funky because one of them is red and one of them is blue. But I'm hoping that they're going to think it's summer and they're going to keep growing. And so maybe we'll have watermelons. Maybe not. I don't know. Can you guys think of any other ways that we could trick these plants into thinking that it's summer? You can think about it and let me know next time you see me. Alrighty, we are going to read a book a little bit more to learn a little bit more about the sun. And this book is called The Sun by Franklin N. Branley. The sun is our nearest star. At night, you can see a lot of stars because the sky is dark. Have any of you guys gone stargazing before or looked at the stars? Do you like to make shapes in the stars? I do. When the sky is bright, you can also see a star. What? It is the sun. The sun is our daytime star. 
It is also the closest star to us. The sun is a star. The sun is very big. It is much bigger than the earth. The sun is almost a million miles across. If the earth was the size of a pea, remember if the earth was the size of a pea, the sun would be the size of a beach ball. Let's see if I can pull it up. Whoa. The sun is very far away from us. It is much farther than the moon. A spaceship takes three days to get to the moon, but it would take three years to get to the sun. All right, so see here we have the Earth, and a short trip away is the moon. But if we were to go to the sun, we would have to fly all this distance away. And that would take us three years. So how old are you guys right now? Then add three to that number. That is how long it would take you to get to the sun if you left right now. And you remember, the sun is our nearest star. It takes eight minutes for light to travel from our daytime star to Earth. It takes almost four years for light to travel from our nighttime stars all the way to Earth. So that's how far away all the other stars are. The sun is made up of hot gases. In the sun and in other stars, there's iron, gold, copper, and tin. They are not solid like they are on Earth. Rather, they are gases because they are so hot. The temperature on the surface of the sun is more than 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That is so hot. The hottest oven is gonna be only 500 degrees. The sun is so hot that a spaceship could not get close to it. If it did, the spaceship would change to gas. That would make the physical change to gas. But without the sun, the earth would be cold and dark. No plants would grow, no animals, no bugs, no birds, no flowers, no people. Nothing would be able to live here. It would just be dark and cold. The sun keeps us alive. It makes plants grow like corn and apples and wheat and bananas. And animals eat those plants. Then we eat those animals and the people. Nope. Then we eat the plants and the animals. They give us energy. So the energy in our food comes from the sun. It is called solar energy. Can everyone say solar energy? Millions of years ago, Earth was covered with swamps and jungles. As plants and animals grew, they stored solar energy. Or, as animals were growing, they were eating lots of things, storing that in their bodies. And then when those animals died, they became fossils. And that solar energy was stored in the soil as coal and oil. Today, we use that coal and oil to make gasoline, and fuel to run our cars and to run our trucks and airplanes and rockets and to give us electricity. For many years, the sun has warmed our planet and it still does. And it's gonna keep shining bright for many years to come. So we are so thankful for our sun because without it, there would be no life. Our sun gives us light, it gives us heat or warmth, and it gives us energy. It plays such an important part in our world. Can everyone say, thank you, sun? Thank you, sun. Alrighty, guys. So today we have a couple of activities for you to do. Our first activity is you are going to build a sundial. A sundial is a way to tell time by using the sun. People way, way back when, they didn't have clocks and electronics. They used to just use the sun to figure out what time it was. They also used the sun to figure out their directions, where they were, and how to get places. So the sun has been very important for many years. So today, you guys will get a piece of paper that looks like this. On your piece of paper, you have some questions. It says, the sun is a blank. Do you guys remember? What is the sun? The sun is a star. The sun gives heat, 
and light. The sun gives heat and light to the earth. The sun is 110 times larger or bigger than the earth. So you guys can go ahead and write in your answers. Up here we have a really important part. We have a sun that is also a clock. The sun is not only important just because it gives light and energy and heat to the earth, but because people have been using the sun and stars to navigate for a long time. By using the stars, people who are sailing can figure out where in the ocean they are, and the sun rises in the east and always sets in the west. North, east, south, and west are the four cardinal directions. If you remember, north is the North Pole. South is the South Pole. We live in the center of the United States, but California is on the West Coast, and Pennsylvania is on the East Coast. So we use directions to tell people where we are in the world. We also use the sun to tell time. In the Roman Empire a long time ago, they came up with something called a sundial, or a sun clock. This sundial uses shadows from the light of the sun to tell what time it is. Today, you're going to get the chance to make your very own sundial. What I need you guys to do is to decorate this sun clock as best you can, and then you are going to use your handy dandy scissors and you're going to cut out your sundial. So, once you've cut out your sundial, you are going to get a paper plate. And if you notice, your paper plate has a hole in it. Just like that. There's a hole all the way through. We're going to ignore that hole for a minute. You're going to take your sundial, you're going to take some glue, and you're going to glue your sundial to the back of your paper plate, just like this. If you can, line up the center of your sundial with that hole and then glue it down. Now, after you glue that, what you're going to do is something kind of tricky. You need to be careful of yourself and of others. But I want you to take a pencil, and I need you to find that hole, and you're just gonna poke your pencil through that hole and through your paper on the other side. So it's gonna look like this when you're done. So look, my pencil went through my plate, and it went through my sundial. So you're just gonna hold the bottom of your pencil like that, and you're gonna hold it like that. And now we get to use this to tell time. So if you see you have 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock. The way we're gonna use our sundial is you hold the bottom of your pencil and point the top of your clock, point 12 o'clock towards the school entrance or towards north. That's the way our sundial is going to work the best. Now, when it's pointed towards north, look at the shadow that your pencil is making. We're not using the actual sun outside. It might not tell you the exact time of right now, but you'll be able to find out how it works, and then later when you do go outside, you can try it again. But you want to make sure that you can see the sun, and you want to point the 12 towards north. You can see on the video, my shadow is pointing towards two. It looks like it's in between the two and the three. So if I was using the real sunlight outside, I would know that it is two o'clock. You guys can play around with it and see what time is it? Where can you get it to go? When you go outside for real later today, you could take this with you and see if you can find out what time it is. And remember, you always need to point 12 towards north. Hope you have a great day. Happy time telling with your sundials.